to mid-April through mid-May love readings. My love readings run from the middle of the month to the middle of the next month because we have these videos here, the career and money readings, as well as your general readings already. And so this kind of keeps you on track as the month goes on. This is for your moon sign. And I know you're like, why? Why not my Venus? Why not my sun? This video right here is gonna tell you exactly why that is. Just trust me, it's gonna resonate more. Um, you'll know why if you watch that video or you know, just trust me, whatever. This month, I'm gonna use a couple different decks and my awesome assistant might kind of edit into the video here what that will, what they look like, okay? And then in the description box below, if you're wondering what that is, there's links there. Um, and if you click on the link and you wanna buy one, I, I'm not selling them, but it's their affiliate links, which is great for me because I have to make money, you know, as well. So hopefully that'll work. Uh, what else? Let's just get started, I guess, then. Um, so the way these love readings work is we're going to look at predictions for singles, couples, and then for those in it's complicated situations. So you might be polyamorous, you might be in an on again, off again relationship. Maybe you're just talking to each other, but you haven't really met yet because of coronavirus. And so you're wondering what that's gonna be like later, you know, when you can see each other, whatever. Um, I'm gonna break it into those three categories and we're gonna look at what the general vibe is this month, what you, um, really want, or at least what you think you want, then what do you actually need? What's going to be the best thing to happen in your love life this month? And then what's the biggest challenge going to be? And then kind of just overall general advice. So let's get started. We're going to start with singles, then move on to couples, and then do, um, for those of you in complicated situations, whether that means you're polyamorous, on again, off again, you're just talking, but it's not committed. Um, we're gonna do those last because sometimes pieces of the single and pieces of the couples will resonate for its complicated situation. So it's not that I love you less, but that's the reason why I do that last. Scorpio singles. Your overall love life um, vibe this month is to choose a different direction. So it could be choose a different way to think about your love life. It could be choose a different way to date. If you're not dating online, maybe now is the time to do that. It could be, you know, take a real big look at what it is that you're looking for. Now for the majority of you, what does this mean? And they're saying, for a lot of you, this is a mindset thing, that you don't believe that the right life partner is out there for you, that they don't exist. Or maybe that you're incapable of finding somebody that you can deeply emotionally bond with and connect with and that it's hopeless. Well, that's actually not the case. And so it's time to start thinking about this differently. Okay. So what is it that you think you want in your love life, Scorpio? And they're saying growth. You want to grow and expand with somebody else. You want to move on from the way that like this, a certain type of relationship. You want somebody that you can grow with, become your best self with, um, with time. Okay, so what is it that you actually need though in a relationship? And they're like, you really kind of, and so that lightning bolt says, figure shit out on your own, okay? You need to do your own growth and stuff independent from somebody else. Because once you're to this place, like, where you're feeling really good about your situation, you're not gonna attract the wrong kinds of partners. And we're not also gonna have unhealthy relationships because we're not looking to somebody else to fulfill a need for us. We're good on our own. And so then, you know, our life is the cake and our potential future partner is just the frosting on top of it that makes something that's already delicious and wonderful even more delicious right? But that we're okay on our own. So it's not like just throw this all in the trash, like this idea that somebody else might um, show up that is wonderful for us. It's like, let's handle our own shit. And then that only leaves space for somebody who is, you know, sort of perfect for us to come along. And that person does exist for you. Okay. It doesn't feel like it all the time. You might've lost faith and hope, but they do. Um, so what is the best thing that is going to happen with your love life this month, Scorpio? That it's going to be easy. There's not a lot of work you have to put into it. What's going to be the biggest challenge for you? 
and they're saying to hold on to what it is that really is important to you. Like sometimes as we start applying time and effort to looking for somebody in our life, then other things go to the wayside and they're like, don't give up those routines. And definitely it's good to be flexible with what you want and what you expect in relationships, but it's not good to sacrifice those really most important kind of um, things that healthy relationships are based on. So like if somebody has a completely opposite political view than you, um, For example, that might be something like because our political views are based on our own like kind of moral framework, that might be something that you don't want to bend on even though they're cute and check a lot of other boxes, if that makes sense, okay? Like what are the most important things to you? Hold on to those and then only be flexible in the things that don't really matter so much that are not foundational, okay? It's good to have your deal breakers, it really is. Um, while you're looking. So the advice for you overall in trying to find the right match for you, because they do exist, is number one, to believe that they exist and that it's not a futile effort, that it's not hopeless. And then just sort of keep doing what you're doing, working on yourself and really identifying what it is that you need and what it is that you expect um, in relationships and not... um, And really giving a lot of deep thought into this, like what makes a healthy, long-term, sustained relationship if that's what you're looking for. So for those of you who are coupled, what is the vibe this month? And they're saying, well, if you meditate on it, if you really think about it, then you know. And it's good for you to take that time apart to kind of just sit in silence with yourself and think about your relationship. So what is it that you think you want in your relationship and your part and from your partner? And it's the same exact thing as um, Scorpio singles have, where it's like, I want to grow with you. I want our relationship to grow and um, become more beautiful and healthy and beneficial for both of us. Maybe I want to take it to the next level. Um, Maybe I want to get to know you on a deeper level than I ever kind of did before. But what is it that you actually need from your relationship? And again, the same exact thing as Scorpio singles, where it's like, to figure out these things on your own, to do a deep dive like of self-reflection as to what's important and what can I let go of. I'm gonna argue with my partner a lot less if I know what really matters to me versus what like is not that big of an issue. If it's not gonna matter next week, next month, like is it something to fight about? Probably not, okay? So what's the best thing that's going to happen in your relationship this month? And they say, well, it's not like you can go out and do anything or go anywhere and that's a big change, right? So the fact that you have to spend time kind of locked in together, if you live together, you know, if you're married or whatever, you're cohabitating, um, that's not gonna change and that's a good thing um, because it's going to help you to kind of identify, you know, what are things that I should be letting go of and what are the things that are really important here that we need to do a deeper dive into and see where we're aligned and how we can kind of grow and come together if we're not. Um, If you are in a committed relationship but you are not living together and things like that, this time apart is really good time for you to actually self-reflect, okay? Now, what is going to be your biggest challenge? And they're like, that you're not really manifesting anything. So that's why this deep dive is really important. Um, Where do you want your relationship to go? What do you want it to look like? What are the goals for your relationship? Because if you don't have those identified, you can't really work towards them. And neither can your partner because they can't read your mind if your mind, especially if you don't even know in your mind what it is that you want, right? So um, any other advice for you with that? And they're just saying it's really, really important for you to think about what do I want? What's going to satisfy me the most here? You know, um, whether that is sexually um, in regards to our work life balance, like um, how like our communication in all areas of your relationship. Okay, so if you are in a complicated situation, what is the overall love vibe for you this month? And they're saying um, there is an abundance of maybe attention from other people um, outside of your complicated situation or maybe even within it. Maybe there is generosity that, you know, the people in your complicated situation or the person there is really willing to help you or to compliment you. There's this like um, receiving, like you need to be open to receive whatever other people have to give you this month. So um, what is it that you think you want from this situation? And the same as singles and couples, you want it to grow, you want it to expand, okay? You want it to be more than it currently is. So 
um, what is it that you actually need from this situation though? They're like, you need to kind of focus in on what are your fears here. If this were upright where it says stop obsessing, um, then they would say, hey, just like, you know, stop, stop thinking about what your fears are. Don't worry. Take it day to day. But because it's saying, yeah, okay, whatever it is that we're either shoving down, that we're suppressing, that scares us about this situation, that leaves us unsatisfied, our fears within this complicated situation, like maybe it's on again, off again, and I'm afraid that I'm wasting time with this person, or maybe it's polyamorous and I'm afraid that um, I am not valued as much as other partners or something like that. They're saying this is something you really need to look at and why is it that you have that fear and dive deep into it. And so um, like you are the center of why you feel the way you do. It's your own fear and that does warrant some examination. So what is the best so that you can kind of get what you want from it or make changes in accordance to that, okay? So what is the best thing that will happen in your love life this month? That you become stronger and you become more tactful. You become a better communicator and you also become a better potential partner for everybody else that is involved in this situation. So, um, you know, should you follow that guidance? If you don't follow the previous guidance that I gave you, they're like, then you just realize that you're gonna have a hard time emotionally connecting. Um, and you know, if there's no emotional connection, then it's not going to last very long. Or maybe you realize that this person just isn't, you know, right for you, or these people aren't right for you or whatever, but that deep dive is really important for you. What is going to be your biggest challenge this month in your complicated situation? And they're saying that you might be a little bit guarded, that you might be a little bit closed off. And so remember the beginning portion of this reading where I said like other people want to give to you, so be open to receive it. A lot of us kind of push things away that really we should be accepting of because it makes our life better. We don't want to burden people when they offer to help us. Like we feel like a burden if we accept that help or that somehow we are not capable enough or we're not viewed as capable enough or you know self um, efficient enough or whatever but that's actually not the case when we allow other people to help us whether um, they just help us by being a listening ear or we allow them to fully show us love and we receive compliments well or you know money or kind deeds or whatever we're honoring them because when we push that away we're making an awkward situation and we're almost like telling the person that, wait a second, um, this kind deed that makes you feel good about yourself, what you're trying to give to me, you know, it's not worth it to me. That's how they feel. We are sort of robbing them of an opportunity to feel good about themselves, to feel like they're contributing. And so you have to be very, very open this month. Is there anything else that you need to know, any guidance or advice? And they're just saying, you know, whatever you put into this situation and whatever you put into your own deep dive and personal assessment of what it is that you want and what you're afraid of and how to work through those fears is going to pay you back six to times, um, six to 10 times worth of the effort that you put in, okay? So if, for example, you work really, really hard on being open to receive um, something good from somebody else, then, you know, six to time, ten, six to 10 times the benefit will come from that. You know, if I don't make compliments awkward, like if, I, if somebody says, hey, you're really cute and I'm not feeling cute, I'm like, uh, like, really, I woke up like this. Um, or, you know, oh, I'm, I just put on a lot of weight or something like that and we make it weird, then they don't feel good about giving the compliment. I don't feel good about receiving it. But if I say, oh, thank you, that makes me feel really good, then I'm gonna get a lot more comp compliments from them and then maybe other people are gonna feel really comfortable giving me compliments and then that starts to boost my self-esteem and then I start to really believe these and then my life just gets better because my vibration raises, right? But then so does theirs. So then the people around you that are offering you things, whether it's compliments or money or you know um, assistance and help in any regard, whatever it is that they're trying to give you, you're gonna get more of it and they're gonna get to give you more of it and then everybody is like vibrating at a higher level and everybody's life gets better and our relationships become stronger and deeper and more full of love and joy and happiness. So um, it's really important. I will see you next month.